All right, this exercise is a straddle hinge. Um, and weightlifting, this would basically be what a good morning is, all right? And the whole purpose of this, before you start loading with any weight, is to get used, of w used to the muscles that you need to work to hinge the hips effectively to bring yourself into a straddle fold. So the way you're gonna set this up is with your feet wider than your hips. You don't have to go super wide. I mean, you could be a little bit closer than this. You could be a little bit wider. You're not trying to take the extremes of the straddle necessarily. And to come into the forward fold, what you're trying to learn to do with this movement here is figure out how to tilt your pelvis forward as your torso comes forward. So if you look at my low back, I'm keeping the arch pressed forward and I'm trying to hold that arch through the whole exercise as I come down, and as I come back up. And what you wanna be sure not to do is round your spine. So you shouldn't be pulling the belly in and rounding here to come into the fold. If you have to round, you're doing it wrong. Now, the whole thing here is by pressing your low back forward, what this is doing is it's engaging your core to tip your pelvis forward as you come into that hinge. And to keep the pelvis tilted forward, your hamstrings have to let go of the tension on the pelvis. Because the hamstrings, basically, the backs of your legs, they link up to your, into a, uh, to the pelvis in back here. And if they're really tight, this is gonna round you out and you're not gonna be able to come into that fold. It takes a while to get this under control. Now doing this with straight legs is harder. And if you can't keep the arch in your spine with straight legs, start to bend the knees and you're gonna bring this down as low as you can. So I'll show, show a few ways to do this. Now, just for reference, just doing this with body weight, no extra weight, no extra tension. I'm gonna bring my hands to my low back, palms away and I'm keeping my shoulders pulled back and keeping the arch in my spine, and I can feel that with my hands where they are. Now my feet are already wide, I'm just gonna go back and forth to the hinge. So low back forward, I'm bringing my chest forward and looking forward the whole time. Now when I feel my spine start to round, I'm gonna bend my knees and then bring myself as low into this fold where I can feel my inner thighs touching my torso, the sides of my belly basically. And then as I come back up, once I have the arch, I'm gonna straighten my legs and squeeze the glutes at the top. And then again, I'm going to bring it down, holding my legs as straight as I can as I hold the arch. Once I need to let go of straight legs, I bend the knees and come down. And I'm using the tension around my core to keep this motion active right here. So work it as best you can. And you may find that you just get to this point with the arch. And then you really have to bend the knees. And that's fine. Close the hinge so you bring your belly, touch your thighs and then bring it back up. So work that as best you can. And again, the work is holding the arch in your spine as you're folding. And finding that contact, you should feel this basically in the outer belly, outside of the ribs, touching the insides of your thighs somewhere as you come down. Now, one of the ways to load up this straddle hinge here is to use a band. And this is gonna engage tension across my shoulders and upper back. It's gonna keep my shoulders pulled back and my chest is gonna stay open. So even as I use my core to press my low back forward, I'm gonna hold the arch through the length of my spine and try to keep looking forward the whole time. Now my arms will be further forward in the fold and this is actually gonna make the fold heavier and much more challenging and it take a deeper stretch into my hamstrings as I come forward here. And again, bend your knees when you need to. Make sure you're maintaining the arch in your spine. So you gotta concentrate while you're moving and not lapse into a low back here. You start doing that too much, you can definitely throw your back out or strain your low back. So really pay attention to it. So I'm gonna take a grip that's a little bit wider than my shoulders. And this is just an elastic band. You can always use like claw strap. And then arms out wide, thumbs back. As I pull, I'm just gonna keep that pull and basically keep the band high. Now I'm gonna bring it forward. And as I have trouble holding the arch, I'm bending the knees. And then come back up, glutes engaged. And I'll bring it down for two. And then come back up. And down for three. And come back up, down for four. And come back up, and then down for five. And come back up. And so that's a way to level up the movement and come deeper. Now, one more way to level up the straddle hinge is using more weight. So I've got a bar. This weighs about 10 to 15 pounds, more or less. I do load weight on this. This is for a barbell. Um, and if you're going to do this, keep in mind, go slow adding weight. Be sure you can actually keep your core engaged. 
and you always want to bias toward less weight rather than more. Make sure you can go through the repetitions that you need without the danger of straining your back. You're trying to build strength, trying to really feel out what you need to do to hold that position with the control of your pelvis tilting forward and let it lengthen out your hamstrings. So you're not necessarily trying to do and trying to do this with some like super high amount of weight. So be careful as you do this. So I'm going to keep this across my shoulders and this is going to help me keep the shoulders pulled back just like the band did. So to bring this up, so I'm going to keep this across my shoulders, chest forward, shoulders back, feet wide like before, and then the same sort of fold. I'll just go through five repetitions here. So I'm going to keep my low back pressed forward. And then as I, as I need to, I'm going to bend my knees and close the gap. And then bring it all the way up for one. And again, bring it down, take it nice and slow. Try to keep looking forward the whole time. And then up for two. And then down again. And then back up to three. And again, bend the knees as deep as you need to. Make sure you don't feel any undue strain in the hamstrings like they're going to tear. And I'll take it through one more. All right. And that is another way to level up the movement. As you go even further, if you want more of a challenge, you can add weight to that but go slow as far as it goes with adding additional weight. Be careful as you move through this.